So uh, the Evidence Network uh, has worked with over 100 entrepreneur research innovation support organizations, um, firstly to help them define what success looks like for their organization, building off a lot of what Wendy was saying in terms of um, expanding beyond traditional metrics of success and, and into more meaningful areas of success. Um, and then also to quantify and communicate that that impact and those successes out, um, and really a lot of our a lot of our work focuses on learning and on making evaluation not a scary and bad thing, but about being a learning opportunity for organizations to figure out how to better serve their constituencies. And so to give you a sense of the lens that we use for this, uh, I thought I'd go through the approach that we use for evaluating um, the impact of these organizations. So as you're all probably familiar, uh, incubators, accelerators, entrepreneurship support organizations um, all have this mandate to have an impact on the performance of, of the clients that they serve. But that's a, an, an inaccurate uh, relationship because there's no formal way for an, an entrepreneur support organization to actually directly impact the annual revenues or the employment of their constituents. You have to look more closely at you know, the investments that they're making in the people and the mentors and the, the projects that they're, that they're funding and the services that they're providing and the networking opportunities that they're providing and look, look at that path and then how that relates to the impact on capabilities. And so, and so our cap the capabilities that we focus on are those intangible kinds of learnings that come out of being part of a, an entrepreneur support organization and the, the linkages that are made and the, the knowledge that is translated. And it's much more the, the soft skills, but that inevitably and eventually will lead to improved company performance in the marketplace. And so that's where we end up with the longer, longer way around um, in terms of understanding what uh, impact of, of uh, entrepreneurship support organizations looks like. And a real focus on obviously those leading indicators because you, know, you can impact the capabilities of, of a company uh, or an entrepreneur much much faster than you can impact their performance. It takes time for, for the learnings of, uh, from a, you know, a mentorship relationship to be translated into the marketplace. And so this allows for that, um, that relationship to be demonstrated. So on top of that, we layer in uh, the evaluation, um, uh, we layer into the evaluation the um, attribution of impact from the perspective of the program participant. Um, so obviously programs can be evaluated along a whole continuum um, of rigor versus feasibility. Um, and so you can get you know, a randomized control trial at the bottom, which everybody thinks is a good idea, but nobody really wants to do. Um, which, for those who don't know, is uh, randomly deciding which companies get support and which don't, and then see what happens, which is a terrible idea in terms of entrepreneurship support. Um, and on the other end, obviously, there's feasibility uh, in terms of you know, success stories and capturing you know, performance, data and satisfaction data and the net promoter score lives in that category somewhere. Um, and so what we do is focus sort of in the middle of rigor, rigor and feasibility um, in terms of judgment of attribution, which is really just an opportunity for uh, the clients themselves to say, this is the impact that this program has had on X variable in my life. Um, interestingly, I was just at the Canadian Science Policy Conference uh, last week, and they were interviewing, I don't know if you were at that session, they were interviewing um, Dr. Mona Niemer, Niemer who is the, uh, the chief science advisor for the federal government, and they had asked her uh, how, sh how she thought she was doing. And her response was, if you want to know how I'm doing, ask the people I serve because they're the ones who can tell you how I'm doing. And that's essentially what, it's a very elegant way of, of you know, demonstrating the judgment of attribution. If you want to know how a program is doing, ask the people that the program has served. And it's a real dirty kind of way of doing it in the evaluation world, but it's the most reasonable way of doing it if you actually are trying to learn about the, about the program. 
And so what this does is shift things away from the traditional metrics, which is you know counting up the number of clients that you have and the number of meetings that were held and the number of mentor meetings that were held and the number of events that you had, and, and which are really you know the traditional side of, of measuring um, impact of uh, entrepreneurship support organizations and shifts it towards impact metrics, which are much more data rich and actionable and, and under and, and provide much more information for um, for the individuals trying to make decisions based on the data because data is powerful and if you are providing them with the wrong data or inaccurate data or data that is not capturing the true context that it's operating in, then you miss uh, miss a lot of the information that can be housed in there. And so then the question becomes, how do we take this and apply it to the conversation of inclusion? Because that's what we're here talking about today. And so for that, I pulled up uh, two, an example of two programs that we had um, worked with in uh, a province here in Canada. Um, who shall remain nameless, um, and looked at uh, the distribution of male versus female participants in the program. Obviously, you see that they're the same. By and large, the, the way that the, the female participants are um, participating in the program is the same, non-financial support. They're not like one side's getting all kinds of VC funding and the other side is only just getting mentorship. Everybody's just being mentored. They're basically in the same industries and um, the same percentage of them, give or take, is in the market penetration stage. So looking to enter the market a little bit more advanced, um, really looking to advance their business. Oh, so I should say, so if, if the metric was you need to have female representation as part of your client mix, both of these organizations can check that box, say we're being inclusive, good for us. We have, well, okay, 14% is not inclusive, but if, if for the sake of the, based on Wendy's face, if for the sake of the argument, the, the goal was, you know, 14% inclusion, then they would both be considered to be inclusive. So let's pretend it was 51% inclusion. They would both be considered to be inclusive. Everybody would say, good job, and then they would move on if we were just looking at traditional metrics. If, however, you look more at the impact side of things, you get to these findings. The red line, for those of you who can't see, red line is um, uh, female respondents, black line are the male respondents. Um, and so what we see is a really distinct distinct difference between program A and program B and the way that they are impacting um, female participants. And all of this data would be lost and, and or overlooked if you really just focus on the traditional, um, traditional metrics. And beyond that, um, moving away from just the traditional metrics of you know, annual revenues and employment and, and VC investment, which is way over there for everybody. Um, and think about things like new customers. 30% 30, 30 of all of these companies are in the market penetration stage. They're trying to move into the markets. And, and new customers is a really critical performance point for them. If you're a man in program A, that's all right for you because that program is having a, a reasonable impact on you. If you are in fact a woman in that program, the program is having virtually no impact on your ability to find and secure new customers. And I think that's a really important opportunity for that program then to learn from that, take, take that information and, and consider the way that they are engaging with their, um, with their female clients and, and to, to adjust the services and move, move forward from that. And I think that part of, part of this conversation needs to be around not making evaluation a scary and bad thing, but really about making it a learning opportunity and, and see it as a continuum towards you know, being more inclusive. And it's not, it's not a bad thing because um, as Wendy said, you know, in, inclusiveness isn't really talked about necessarily in Canada. I was looking through all of our data and when we did you know, studies in Peru and Indonesia and Cambodia and everywhere else, they all ask questions and they all want to know about women versus men and how, you know, how programs are impacting women versus men and it's a real conversation in those 
developing kinds of economies and very few of our Canadian clients are asking these kinds of questions and are asking for this kind of segmentation of the data. And so, um, so I think it, it really speaks to the, to the opportunity that we have to start bringing this to the forefront and to start, um, start discussing this. And so, so these are the kinds of things, um, if you have the right data and you have a more um, robust data set, then you can start affecting change with it. And you can provide decision makers with, with the information that they need to understand the way that they are, the way that their support programs are impacting the clients that they serve. Um, and importantly, uh, looking at the, the deeper data, you can identify subtextual patterns. And so here's a, a, an example from a research uh, institute here in Toronto. Anyways, um, obviously not a very inclusive organization, but you know they, they saw this and they thought, okay, that's pretty representative. That's kind of what we expected. But importantly, when we looked at their impact data, the women, in fact, were being impacted more than the men as a result of the pro, uh, as a result of the support being provided, and so that gave them pause and sort of created an aha moment for them to think, hmm, if we're looking to impact researchers and we know that we're having a greater impact on female researchers, isn't this an opportunity then to start trying to find more female researchers to work with and, and to really adjust the way that they're engaging with the research population as a result of that? Um, and so when you think about you know, what the Oh, I promised I'd be quick. Sorry. When you think about where the uh, where the gaps are, because that was part of our part of our uh, discussion here today, um, you think about you know the gaps in terms of you know thinking about who's being who's applying to programs versus who's getting in. If you have you know 80% of applicants are women and 18% of participants are women, you've got a real opportunity to learn something there. Um, in terms of the mentor metrics, diversity, um, experience of mentors, the level of client engagement of mentors, um, aligning between the mandate and um, and uh, the data being collected and, and understanding that if you are a, a startup support organization being asked to demonstrate impact on annual revenues and employment is an unreasonable ask because you are dealing with one person startups that just started. This is a bad metric and it will drive poor decision making because it will lead you to you know, attracting larger companies. Now we're drifting away from the mandate. Or attracting tech companies. Again, drifting away from the mandate. Um, and so that uh, and really focusing on, on outcome metrics is something that's really often overlooked. We get lost in the sea of data and there are things that are so easy to collect and metrics that are so fun to just tally up. Um, but uh, oftentimes they really overlook um, the true outcomes and the true impacts of the programs. So for me, um, you know, measuring the success of uh, inclusive initiatives really needs to be more around um, what were the outcomes generated as a result of those initiatives, rather than it is just tallying up um, tallying up the number of of inclusive individuals that you've uh, you've brought into the fold. So I think I'll leave it there, and we'll take some questions.